Today we'll be talking about uh, one of my favorite authors from this immediate area. No longer with us, but it was always so interesting to talk to and just to hear him talk about his experiences. And that would be uh, Floyd Bud Freilich. And the book that we're going to be talking about today is A Badger by the Tail. And uh, we don't have anything on the front of the book yet, but we're going to put something there so that because it's displayed that way on our tables down here in the history room. And we'll be uh, showing some pictures. And one that we have here, of course, uh, Verna and Bud in their prime. And a beautiful picture of the two of them. And here we see uh, uh, Sergeant Charles' son and Heidi Ostrander at the age of two. Over on this side, we have, again with the book, we'll try to keep it flat for you, Heidi and uh, Leighton uh, Ostrander. Great grandma, Verna, was Zachary in 1986. And Bud and Verna's 40th anniversary picture. We'll be looking at some more here, but I would like to talk a little bit about the author here. And then we'll be looking at some other pictures. Born Floyd Abner Freilich, May 24th, 1919, to Clarence Al Freilich and Hazel Fern Freilich, when they lived on the Bagley Place, where Ducky Barrels, Bar Barrels lives now. Grew up as a son of the soil, hills, forest, and river during the Great Depression. Was considered a professional corn shucker when it was all picked by hand. Spent season after season in the western harvest fields. Was considered a good veterinarian of the homegrown variety. Worked on a cattle ranch chased wild horses, spent time as a lumberjack in Idaho, spent four years plus in the U.S. Marine Corps before and during World War II. Turned down the love of several of the best looking girls in two countries to marry my pick of the bunch. Uh, uh, looking, uh, raised a family of two sons and two daughters spent 30 years as a U.S. postmaster. It sounds like a full life as I write it here, and I guess it has been. Please share some of it with me on these pages. About the title, Wisconsin folks are called badgers. Badgers are solid citizens of the animal world, very protective of their families, and worthy opponents in a knockdown, drag out fight. I am proud to be called a Wisconsin Badger. Signed, Floyd A. Bud Freilich. Now I'd like to uh, read a part. Maybe we'll also look at a few pictures here while we're at that. Uh, I'll show another section here in the book. And you can kind of see what's uh, under each picture here. And uh, different locations. And a family kind of a group picture here on the bottom. In the back row, Chris, Bud, Verna, and John. In the front, Chuck and Nancy. On the other side, we have Tony, Chris, and Riley, and Tony Meyer showing. And we'll have a little bit more yet, but I'd like to read a portion here from the book. Now, Bud was in the Civilian Conservation Corps uh, organization for a while. Uh, that's an organization that was very important uh, during the Great Depression. They did a lot of 
work uh, on different farms, conservation work, things along that line. Uh, did a lot of good things and it gave a job to a lot of people at that particular time. So it was a very good organization. But I'll be talking about a little bit that happened to him after he was with the Civilian Conservation Corps. Talks about uh, what he was doing next. I did take off though, and during one of the busiest times too, the boss was a hard-headed Dutchman that had never worked away from his own farm and really had some weird ideas. He had sent me to cultivate corn with a one row corn cultivator and a big, beautiful roan team over on one of the other farms that he had rented about a mile away. He would always shake his finger at me and say in his Dutchy way, buddy, you will not run the horses. I arrived at the cornfield and was busy working row after row. The team began to look up the sky, snort and act nervous so I knew a nasty storm was building up. All at once, lightning struck a lone tree right close to where we were with a hell of a crash. A lone tree, uh, the team was off and running at once. They jumped onto a dirt road that led down the ridge towards some empty farm buildings. I was scared as they were, so I just sat on the old cultivator seat and let them go. The first building we came to was an old empty machine shed. I got the scared team, cultivator, and myself all inside by the time the wind and rain hit. The team was quieted down. We didn't get struck by lightning. We didn't even get wet. I felt pretty proud of myself. We struck out for the home place as soon as the storm was over. The boss was waiting at the barn as we came in and wanted to know why we were not wet. I explained about the lightning and getting shelter in the machine shed. I thought I had handled it pretty well. He started out in his Dutch way of saying, y'all, but you run the horses. He went into a tirade that Hitler would have been proud of a few years later. His wife was fine, sensible woman who tried to shut him up and smooth everything over. She couldn't face him, so I whispered to her to come up with my wages and he could drive his own horses. She didn't want me to leave, but she had seen that I had all I could take. So she brought my wages all in cash. I bid the place goodbye. I loaded my trunk and suitcase in the back seat of the Model A. I was ready for another session with the harvest fields of the Dakota. I talked over what had happened with the folks. They thought I had done the right thing. Ma came up with the idea that we had some distant cousins in part of Dakota that I had never been in and why didn't I look them up? I thought about it, figured I probably wouldn't be able to find them, but by daylight the next morning, I and the old Model A was crossing the Mississippi at Prairie de Chien into the west. I tooled the Model A along about 45 miles per hour. By evening, I was into eastern South Dakota. I stopped at a greasy spoon for supper, then pulled the car off the road on a schoolhouse section of land. This was 640 acres that had been given by the government to each school district to help support the school. Some of the sections weren't farms yet, but were covered with the richest grass of all, the old original buffalo grass, along with other wild grasses. It was a original, it was a wild and uh, lonely place to spend the night. Coyotes, hunting mice and jackrabbits, and then taking time out to howl it to each other, were noisy throughout the night. The next morning, when I started the Model A to get back to the road, six or more jackrabbits took out from under the car. I guess they had gathered under there to keep away 
from the coyotes. Don't want to go on too long here or anything, but I think it gives you an idea. He was in a lot of places at different times in his life and a lot of different adventures. And of course, later on there uh, into the military, a lot of experiences there too that will be covered in the book for you. And I'll show you uh, some more pictures here before we stop. Here's a picture past here from Ross, Zach, and Ben and Holly. You see Holly and Ben and Zach and Ross. And like I say, there's a lot of adventures to read about in this book. I didn't want to take too long, but uh, Bud doesn't mince any words at times. He pretty well comes out and says, what's what? And uh, the way it was at the time. So I think you would find that he's being very honest and truthful there in what he has to say. And again, this is one of the books that's uh, available down in the history room. If you contact uh, the library phone number uh, and would like to have that sometime, we would make sure it was upstairs and they could place it out for pickup there. All depends what happens here in the future there about uh, with the virus epidemic and everything and how we have to continue doing things. But I'm sure you would find the book very, very interesting.